Well, hello, this is Steve Baumgartner. Thanks for coming back. Greatly appreciate it. This is number two in my wine enjoyment series. Uh, this one is going to be about uh, aerating your wine. There's many different types. You can see one right here. This is the Venturi. This is probably my favorite, and I'll explain why that it's my favorite. Um, there's another one that's really high priced, and I'll show that one, kind of explain why I think that was actually the best, but for the money, this one is <clears throat> aerating your wine. Really, all you need to aerate is your red wines. Uh, you can aerate your white wines, but normally not necessary. It will um, give you a little more aroma, and that's what we're going into. When you aerate wines, you're getting air into the wine. When you get the air into the wine, uh, go into a vapor, take the liquid into a vapor. And then when you have your wine glass, you get it from your nose and you're gonna smell that vapor coming out. If you don't aerate, it's just gonna sit at the bottom of your glass and only the top level of the wine is gonna touch air. So by aerating the entire amount that you put in your glass, you're gonna get a better flavor. You're gonna get a more aroma. So that's kind of what we're going for here. Um, I looked up and there's probably like probably about seven main types of uh, aerators that I saw. There was one that you stick actually in the top of the bottle and it sits there and you pour out, which was, it was kind of cool, but it doesn't aerate as well as some of the other ones, although it's very convenient and I actually thought about getting one of those just out of its convenience. Um, there's another one that's a push top, actually not a push top, it's a button push has a little spout. It has a uh, tube that goes down inside and it's uh, battery operated. And what it does, you push the battery or the button, it pushes in air, pushes out the wine into a glass. So you have a glass here and you push it into. All right, so that one worked really good. As it's going through its mechanism in there, it comes out into the glass and you can actually see how aerated the, gla uh, the wine is which is really, it's probably the best one that I've seen out there. Now I'll put a picture in of what that is. Um, I'm gonna tell you, I don't sponsor any products. I'm not sponsored by any products. I'm just showing you the ones I like, period. No money involved whatsoever. All right, get that out of the way. Um, I brought this out to show you, this one's basically for champagne. It's very uh, narrow, because what happens is, as you put the champagne in, the bubbles go up the side of the glass and flutes the aroma a little better. It's essentially what that is for. It's just for that. I don't get into champagne because I don't really like it. Um, so we'll just take that one off the table. And now we have this one. This one is used for sherry, cognac, things like that. What you're going to do, you've seen them on TV, to cup it like this. And the reason you're doing that is you're actually warming up contents causes more aroma to come up and you see them doing that with the sherry and cognac it's like oh man it smells so good it's because they're warming it up and it actually tastes better that way too it brings out the flavors and the aroma so that's what this is for it's a shallow glass made for warming all right now we're here talking about wine so here's the wine glass this is a small one it's like a six ounce wine glass normally um, they suggest that you hold the wine down here and when you're stirring it, you stir it from down here and go like this. Keep it at about one third. And the only reason that is, is to give you time to swish it around in area. If you can't do it this way very well, set it on the table and just do it like that. Um, if you go beyond half, you're just taking a chance of it sloshing out. And you don't want to waste any wine, that's for sure. So that's the recommendation on that. It's not a big deal. If you're a wine guzzler, guzzle. Um, now I will tell you, I make wine. There's a lot that goes into it. There's uh, weeks, sometimes months, that go into preparing your wine, making sure that it is um, fermented properly, that the levels are right, um, that I throw mine through a filter just to get all the particulates out. Um, so there's a lot of uh, work that goes into these bottles of wine, especially the home one. The, the big manufacturers, it's just like uh, throw it through a bat, through a filter, boom, boom, out, done. Hardly anybody ever touches it. The home mine is what I, mine is, actually, this is the best wine in the world. 
Uh, it actually does taste good. Uh, the difference between store-bought and, and homemade wine, not just mine, but homemade wine, is that uh, the alcohol content is a couple notches higher and the aroma is better and the flavor is better because it's not filtered so much. Manufacturers, companies have to filter it and um, preserve it. It takes a lot of aromas out, the flavors out, and their content of uh, alcohol is around 12.5% generally around that area. Mine is about 14.5%. It's just the way it is because I don't throw it through so many processes which filter out also the alcohol. So um, I have never had a complaint over this wine whether it be uh, a dark red, light reds, uh, whites, uh, whether from uh, Costa Rica or Australia, uh, never had a complaint. Uh, granted, a lot of people that uh, I know just drink. They don't care whether it's uh, bad flavor, good flavor, they just want alcohol content. Eh. That kind of bothers me a little bit, but you know, it's all about social and having uh, people around that are having a good time. Everybody expresses their good time in a different way. The other uh, night, Another get some people over and they want to try my wine. So it was a white wine. You know, I'm kind of proud of my stuff. So I, I put the white wine in there. Then she asked for ice. Yeah. Okay. Chilling wine. The colder the wine is, the less flavor, less aroma you're going to have. I know everybody has their preference. If you like your cold, make it cold. Um, Normally, when they say chill your wine, it's not below 60, 6 degrees. That's usually what a uh, wine cellar is. That's chilled. Anything below that, you're taking away from the value of the wine itself. Maybe not the wild alcohol content for you or them, but it takes away from the uh, integrity of the wine, I guess, for what that is. Um, so when she did that, I kind of went, oh, man. Gonna hurt a little bit, but that's okay. It's all right. Um, we'll just bring out cheaper wine when they come over, like two buck chuck or something. <laughs> I don't mean to be snobby. It's just that uh, I put a lot of work into this, and I want people to appreciate it at a you know, moderate level, not no level. Okay, so that be as it is. Moving back to this. Normally, you're gonna hold your glass in the stem. If you want to warm your wine up. You can always hold your glass like that, and it will warm your wine up. And you're going to get more flavor, and you're going to get more aroma and taste. So it's your choice what you want to do. I, I kind of I kind of do this, because I, warm wine doesn't bother me at all. Actually, I like the flavor, and I'll sit there, just enjoy it. Man. I'll just sit there in my little easy chair and just sniff the wine. It just smells so good. I mean, I, I guess it's, good. It's, it's equal to, like, those guys who like cigars you're not really they're not inhaling it they're just tasting the flavor and the after aroma i mean i don't know about you but when i walk into a room that has a light smell of cigar it actually smells good especially when you have a little bit of cigar and a little bit of wine i don't smoke i never have but i do like the aroma that the tobacco gives off on cigars so it's kind of like the same thing i think so all right here we go um, so this is your glass I got the six on glasses because I did a lot of wine tastings in the past. Um, so we're going to kind of do the same thing. Um, explain the Venturi. It comes in a little stand, which I have over there, and it comes with this little filter. Okay, the Venturi itself. What it does, you put the wine in, it swirls around, and it creates a suction. There's little holes on the side, and you can see the little things right here. They'll suck in air. Now, if you don't pour it in fast enough, some of the wine may come out of these little holes. So you gotta, don't do it over a white carpet or a white outfit. All right, so that's what that does. It goes through, this sucks it in, this sucks in the air, which aerates the wine. This is your filter. You want to put the filter on. Because again, you're doing red wines. Red wines have a tendency to get uh, sediment, even the best wines. Um, actually, some of the best wines have more sediment. You're going to get what's called wine diamonds. Wine diamonds is just a... Uh, so you're going to get that in there, the wine diamonds. Uh, they're not going to hurt you, although you don't want to really feel them in your uh, mouth. Uh, they don't really have a lot of taste. They just are kind of gritty. 
they're not unhealthy at all. You could consume them. It's just part of the uh, wine, especially good wines. It's really, a lot of people will, what they'll do is they'll cold chill it for a couple weeks and they'll drop to the bottom and then they'll pull it out again into another container. That gets rid of most of it. I don't bother with that. Um, I just, what I, I'm just careful that I don't pour out the bottom the contents of the bottle. I can just go down to the bottom eighth or quarter and stop there and kind of pour and a lot of it will settle right here when you're doing that. And then maybe that's why they designed these kind of things. I don't know. So anyway, um, always use your filter, red wines, put that on here. And that'll filter out any cork pieces, any uh, wine diamonds, any other particulates that may be in there. Now you don't have to worry about particulates. Like you're not going to get any germs from anything. And nothing's going to kill you. It may not taste good, may not feel good when you swallow it, but things generally aren't going to hurt you in there unless the wine's bad. All right, so that's that. Catch that, put that in, you're good. Now these, has a little, this thing has a little rubber piece on it. If you have a decanter, that's the kind that goes down, kind of goes like this and flutes out like that. This is replacing that. The reason is decanters, you have to put your wine in for about two, three hours. However, all it's going to aerate is the top level of wine. So they were great in its day, and they are pretty. There's many different cool designs, swirlies and loopy things. They're kind of cool, but they don't aerate the wine as well. So if you're into looks, go for the decanter. If you're into the taste and aroma, go for a venturi of some sort. So that's what this is for. It stops in the neck of the um, decanter, so it won't fall all the way in. And then you can also aerate into your decanter. That's one way of doing it. I have decided to use this mount. Um, it's really cool. My brother made this. It's so cool. Um, yeah, I got a kayak on that one. Um, so I put it up here. It's a stand. You can buy uh, the plastic ones or I call them plexiglass. Or, uh, so this holds the wine. It goes in. So I'm going to demonstrate for you with my excellent bottle of wine from Baumgartner Ranch. I don't make a mess. Just put that in. Here. We're going to try to keep less than half. Kind of tough to do when you're trying to get the uh, circulation thing going on there. So put that back in. So you can see the bubbles. It's aerated. You heard that noise? It's sucking in the air into the uh, wine as it's going down. So this is what exactly what you want. Now the other one I'm talking about with the push button, it comes out a lot foamier. It is well aerated. And I think that's the best one of them all. This will probably do the job. Yeah, I mean, I, I can, right at the top, I can smell it. This is beautiful, of course. Um, so that's that on the aeration. Um, I, I've seen some people do the white wines. I just don't think it's necessary. Also, I don't think it's necessary to chill them, although some people like it better. I'm all for flavor and aroma. So that's all I have on this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be glad to uh, explain things deep, in a little more detail. Uh, I'll put some links for these items. Um, there are no links for my wine. It's just that you have to be here to have that. Um, I think that's about it. So if, again, uh, subscribe. Watch the videos all the way through to the end. It helps us out. Um, and I'll uh, have another one for you next time. I think I'm going to try to do uh, a little more on the uh, maybe the aroma or some other stuff like that. I don't know. I'll figure it out. So there you go. I'll see you real soon.